Okay, I am back for more carving. I took a break and um, had this again stored in my plastic until I was able to come back to it. Um, it's actually just the next day, so um, not too much probably has changed in this. But just as a reminder, it had been stored in, in a plastic bag. So I left off at a point that I would maybe consider to be like 65% done. Remember there's still a lot of great um, shape that or detail that I've started adding to this piece. Um, but you know, I have a nice taper. I'm starting to work with this. I've got that layer added and, um, but it still has some extra nuance to carve into it, maybe 70% at this point. So I'm just gonna continue to plug away um, and maybe kind of play with a few different tools as I'm working and just to kind of continue to remind myself where I am. It's also not a bad idea if you've, if it's been a day or two to take a scrap piece of your plaster and just kind of practice working with your tools um, or getting certain effects just as a little bit of a warm up. So um, instead of just diving right in, especially if you're at the part where you're getting closer to the detail, it might be good to kind of ease into it by practicing um, a little bit. I have a feeling some of you are gonna to try to use an X-Acto knife or maybe even a utility knife. Um, and so I just wanna make sure that you, if you do decide to use one of these, that you're sort of very careful and cautious. And so I'll, I'll just give you a few little pointers. Um, if you are using an X-Acto knife, um, usually when we're cutting a sharp blade when we're cutting paper, a sharp blade is safer and better or cardboard or whatever. But if you are um, carving into plaster, it actually would probably be better to use a dull um, one of your blades. So if you have a, a, a container of uh, your dull blades, that would probably be best to grab from. I usually put like X's on them or Sharpie marks so that I know which are my sharp and which are my dull. Um, and then if you do decide to use like a utility knife, I just have this little cheap one here. A couple things to keep in mind is that you don't want the full blade extended that uh, to work with because the more blade that is out, the more potential that you have to cut yourself. So you want to only have out as much as you think you might need in order to carve. And then the other thing just to know about is most of these blades have some kind of a lock. So this mechanism that allows it to go up and down also will have something that locks it into place so that it can't go up or down, which will help you um, as well so that as you're carving, more doesn't come out or it doesn't sink in. So always pay attention that it's locked in place. And when you're not using it, retract the blade as well. So. And then if you are carving, think about where the rest of your um, body is in relation to what it is that you are carving. So I wouldn't just want to have this here and then just start carving without some kind of a control. So it might seem a little counterintuitive, but I actually usually have my thumb kind of um, at the back side of the blade. And I'm not being super aggressive with this. The idea is just to take off little bits at a time and not larger sections. And um, I think that this is going to be useful, like for example, to get um, along this cap and to make a nice sharp distinction between those two planes, maybe for this angle here. And again, it's just like slow little bits. You're never trying to take off big, big chunks. So 
So I do use these, but it's always with great awareness of, um, you know, how much potential they have to, to cut. So if I'm super tired, this is not a tool that I will utilize. And if you can use it going away from you, if your form will allow for that, that's also good. It's a little safer. I've been working on trying to round this and match it to that sort of shape, the top shape. And, you know, you'll notice that this is a little bit blocky and um, kind of sharp. It's not round and smooth. That's okay. Try not to get obsessed with smoothing everything out as you go because you have to modify and shape and adjust. That smoothing out is like the last step that you do. Um, it's always really tempting even for me to just like focus in on an area and kind of get really obsessed about it. But again, uh, try not to let yourself do that because if you get to a point where you realize something is wrong or it needs to be fixed and you spent an hour or two smoothing and polishing it out, you're going to be less likely to um, give yourself permission um, to undo or kind of erase all that work. So try to avoid that. And again, as this is getting a little thinner, I'm, I'm being a little bit more careful. I'm also aware that I'm putting pressure here um, and I want to kind of think about that so that it doesn't snap. So my other hand is kind of cradling it and acting like a cushion. You could, if you had sort of more sponges or different things like that, also um, have it like on a little pillow um, for carving as well. But since it's so small, I just like it in my hand. So a couple things, <clears throat> don't forget posture check-in. So I'm standing and um, this table is at a height that's great for sort of working on medium sized things, but not super small. So, you know, I could possibly do a little bit of leaning to kind of have a little balance and, and support. Um, I could get a chair so that I'm slightly lower to the piece so that it's kind of a little closer to eye level. Again, I'm trying to avoid something where my head is looking down for extended periods of time. And so for me, I'm okay if I, again, lock in my elbows and just kind of hold it at about this level here. So always think about your body ergonomics and then just kind of continue to pay attention to your form as you're going. I'm getting close to doing this little section here, which is quite thin and it's got some tiny little sections. So I want to be careful that I kind of slow down there a little bit. But also when if you have something that's really thin and really delicate, the plaster is not going to be able to handle that like a paper, paper thin. But you could sort of fake it by tapering your form from something wider to something smaller so that the end isn't like razor sharp but just a little thinner and that that thinner edge will give the illusion that everything sort of further back also 
has that same kind of um, mass to it or, or airiness, I should say. Um, so those are ways that you can kind of get away with tricking the viewer into thinking things are more delicate or precious than they are. So one of the things that I just noticed that's kind of cool to give a little detail is that this edge here is kind of sticking out a little further. And so, where is it? I've been kind of trying to work to replicate that here by giving the illusion that this is narrower and then that what is wrapping around, you can see it from coming from the front to the back and then back around to the front. Again, it's those little details that are really gonna take a lot of time and effort to pay attention to. Those are the things that kind of help trick the viewer and sort of fool the eye and also really kind of capture the attention of your viewer. And details like this, again, really require observation, not just guessing. So I've propped my object up so that I have a better view of it. So it's been 24 minutes since I've been carving. That feels, um, I, I kind of feel like I've only been here for 10 minutes. So I'm surprised that that much time has passed. Um, the first part of this video seemed to like really go fast, right? So you block down your form and then uh, this is where you spend the time bringing it to life. So before I get too obsessed with this side, I'm going to turn it over, start working on the other, make sure that I'm not removing too much material or not enough material. So I'm starting to kind of undercut now where that toothpaste is. You can see I'm getting a little more of a shadow there. I'm probably not going to go quite as deep as is actually there, but um, I definitely want to give that illusion of the fold. And I'm definitely getting thinner, so I want to keep paying attention to that. It can be useful as your plaster starts to get a little more dry. Um, and as you start kind of getting finer detail work to maybe have some kind of a little stiff bristled brush that you can use to kind of help get some of those little things off as you're working. Okay, so this is fairly subtle, but I'm working to offset this whole top. So remember earlier I had said that I saw this edge came out to the side a little bit, which also meant that the opposite side kind of started shifting, I guess, that way. And so I have a little excess here, which means that I have to kind of take that much away over here. So just been slowly whittling away at that it might not be a bad idea for me to start moving on to another section before i go quite too far here
So I think that this edge needs to be considered a little bit more. I feel like it needs just a slight, a little bit more of a taper to it. Um, but I don't want to remove too much material, so I'm going to be kind of really careful as I go here. Will this work? Let's prop this up. So again, you can maybe see this is why this is one of my favorite tools is it can just get into that little edge there and kind of pick out that detail. But if all you have is a needle tool, that also can work. Um, sometimes it's not just like drawing the line, but it's pressing the tool down to kind of carve or lifting it up to carve as opposed to just thinking you're making a line. You can. Um, get a little bit more out of the needle tool in that in that case and I can even sort of like lay it at an angle and drag this along that edge there to kind of help make that plane more level I found a nice little kink in the tube. I don't know if you can see that, but I want to try to catch that shadow by kind of breaking those planes up. Okay, so there are still lots of subtle nuances on this tube that I could carve into this form. And um, I am going to add a few as I go, but also just for the sake of time for this video, I'm gonna kind of um, speed a few of the steps along. Um, and so I'm going to work on cleaning up this cap. I'm gonna work on defining these edges a little bit I'm gonna use the green scrubby to kind of smooth things out and then maybe go in and add a few of those extra defined planes. I say I'm gonna do it quickly, but we'll see how long that actually 